I, I love telling people what we're about to do, but a lot of a lot of times it's just flat out jaw dropping amazement. A lot of people just don't even believe it, you know. They, and I have to show them pictures and what 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 we've done and what we can do, you know. Detroit, please a big welcome for Mr. B, Mark Braun. Go ahead, go ahead. I was raised in Flint, and my father was um, always a big fan of really excellent music, and my mother as well, but I think especially my father, and so we had good music around the house, and for the first probably 12 to 15 years of my life, I didn't really show much interest in music, a little tiny bit in elementary school, but I was mainly interested in athletic pursuits, and um, then at around the age of 15, I started to take a small interest in fiddling around on the piano. My father brought me a record, which uh, I still have, which is uh, an LP of Jimmy Yancey, the father of Chicago blues piano. And I can't really, couldn't possibly exaggerate the impact it made on me. I just, from the very first listening, and at that time, I'm, I'm 60 years old now, so when I was 17, 18, when I heard this Jimmy Yancey play the piano blues so beautifully and so plainly and just beautiful, I just fell for it instantly. And from that day forward, I've been trying to learn how to play blues piano, and I've done just about everything I could in order to to find people that would teach me. Yeah. <laughs> So when I was in my 20s, which is you know, a very long time ago now, I wanted to combine a couple passions. So I wanted to figure out a way. I started to get obsessed about this idea of putting a piano on a bicycle. And to the best of my knowledge, I had you know, never known anyone I had done, so I don't know how it came into my head, but it did. So I reached out to a friend of mine who's a world championship bike builder. His name is Mark Noblet, And I asked him to help me design and build a unique bicycle that could hold a piano on it. And he uh, uh, came up with uh, our first piano bike, which came into service in 2009. And we made three trips across or throughout the state of Michigan. With the riders on the back, we're about 16 feet long and weigh about 1,200 pounds. And we can move at speeds up to, oh gosh, it scares me just to say this, but one time we went 38 miles an hour on this thing. So it will go down the road, and uh, especially in the big hills. 2014, we took the piano bike, a 620-pound bicycle, 1,840 miles along the entire length of the Mississippi River from its headwaters at Lake Itasca all the way to New Orleans. Not too many play, people play traditional boogie-woogie or blues piano, and when you just come across people in the middle of nowhere and just whip off the tarp off the piano and play them a boogie-woogie and just just leave them where they were. They're just astounded and, and and usually overjoyed, you know, just for a moment. So that's that's what we're about at Joybox. It was only the second day of our ride, and we went to a high school to perform, which we often did on the trip all the way down. And uh, a girl approached me, a high school age student, and her boyfriend was holding her elbow. And you could see she had a really intense look to her. And she was visibly shaken and disturbed. And, you know, I was paying close attention. And she approached me and she passed me this. And it says allergy awareness. And you know, it just started to dawn on me, wait, there's going to be a really bad story here. And her brother had um, 
an allergic reaction and attack and he he died before he could complete high school and it was his dream to ride the length of the Mississippi River on a bicycle so she came to me and she asked me if I would keep his memory in my mind as I rode and as we rode and I put that on the handlebars in front of me and every single time we came to a hill that was killing me that I didn't think we could make you know, I would look down at this and I would think, we're here, we have this opportunity, we have to do this, we have to succeed. And no matter what we did, there were times we had to push our bike up hills in the middle of nowhere and just at the risk of utter exhaustion. But we never, we never really failed. There was another where, never anything that we couldn't do if we tried hard enough. And it was with memory of her brother and mine the whole time and it was just it just meant a lot to me of course I was told about this guy named Skip Button whose gym you saw me at today and in eight months we had kind of a, this amazing physical transformation I have before and after pictures I could share with you and um I gained the strength, you know, and I'm also along the way I was always swimming three days a week and doing a lot of cycling and then just a lot of kind of non-traditional gym work under his direction just to get strong enough. About once a week I tie an underwater parachute to my ankles and which is <laughs> really hard to pull through the water. And then I put these great big paddles on my hands, which I can show you later, and on my arms and I just pull for about two hours at a time just training, um, trying to become strong enough in order to be able to do this. But currently, you know, our new project, which is called Sprint for Flint, uh, it's a 24-hour around-the-clock sprint from Flint to Mackinac City on the piano bike. And it will involve, we hope, up to about maybe 48 riders. This is uh, like an old-fashioned tip jar. Now, I could have hidden it in the back, but everybody loves to be seen being generous. <laughs> it's not church. We can either pass it around or you just make your way up. Anything that lands in here tonight will go to Youth Quest in Flint, all right? All right. It's just another way if you don't want to make a big bid, if you want to, you just want to throw a $100 bill in there or something. Like that. You know, this, this trip this year is all a benefit for um, a group in Flint, which is called Youth Quest, which is a 2,000 child per day after school uh, enrichment program in which each child receives a meal every day, tutoring every day, opportunity to be in dozens of different kinds of clubs. It's an absolutely well run and really beautifully executed program that we're really, really trying to support. And I think that everyone who we describe this ambition to is just so in favor of and so much in support of our mission and as it relates to youth quest and the need in the city of flint what we're going to do this year is to ride our 620 pound bicycle within 24 hours yeah we're just getting started too from flint to mackinac okay to take over 48 riders going in 10 mile increments one hour shifts and once we get there we're taking the piano bike across the bridge on a trailer, don't worry, on a trailer. <laughs> we're going to put it in a parachute in the middle of the bridge, no. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take it over to St. Ignace, we're going to put it on a boat, and we're going to tie it to our ankles. <laughs> don't laugh at me, this is not going to be easy for me to do. <laughs> and we're going to swim it five miles across open water by pulling it to Mackinac Island. <laughs> yep, that's, yep that's, what we're, that's what we're going to do. When we first wanted to do it, and I would tell people what we were going to try to do, 
a lot of people just just you know laughed in my face and just were incredulous. Even people on our own team told us that we would fail and that it really couldn't be done and that it was just too difficult. And but now that we've you know proven that we're really committed to this and that the bike works, that our bodies work, that our programming in schools work, that our messaging works and that what we're doing really has value to other people. Now people are just, you know, many people are just kind of dumbfounded, but just very pleasantly surprised to learn that someone's just doing something so unique and eccentric, you know. It's hard to express with words how nice it feels and just good it feels to be able to share your passion with somebody else and just to play music for people that, like I said before, they're not experts, they're not people that came to be part of some event, they're just people that you come across, and to just share this, this gift, I guess, that you have, or this passion that you have with people is a really unique opportunity, and I've just, I think I probably have more gratitude around me than I, than I had before. Uh, we've learned that what we do has been very inspirational to other people, you know, uh, who might have a, a burning, simmering ambition to do something unusual. And it doesn't have to be as, as dramatic or as physical what we're, as what we're doing, but that they see what it means to me to have my own dream come to light. And they can see, frankly, just the, the joy and the mood that I can be in while I'm doing this. And people want to be able to feel that way. That just feels terrific to me. But I'm just hoping that someday, you know, I'll hear from some child that was, you know, 11 years old in Arkansas that saw us at a school that will have dreamed up some exciting adventure for his own life, you know, some rewarding experience that he or she will have invented for themselves and challenged themselves with that will have affected the lives of other people positively. And this is, this is what I hope, you know, this is what I hope. Yeah. If you, you know, keep your eye on the prize and you allow yourself to believe in your dreams, your ambitions, that you can make them happen and that they have hidden unknown benefits to you and to others around you. It's your turn next. That's what I hope. That's what I hope if somebody sees me doing this, that somebody else will think of something that's twice as great. That's what I hope. I've always said I want to come in second in the great American piano race. You know, I want somebody else to have been so inspired by what we've done that they do it better than we do. That would be a, a great, great achievement. Mm -hmm.